Okay, so this is an unusual movie review. Today we went to see, in central New York... Truth or Dare. Truth or Dare. And I got some buttery popcorn. Oh my God, buttery popcorn. Why don't they do buttery popcorn in the Maybe UK? They should. What's so good about it? It's salty and buttery. buttery. <laughs> and you get to add... Do they put butter on it before you put butter on it? No, you just add your So it's just butter. normal salty? Yeah. So for those of us who don't know, what's the concept behind the game Truth or Dare? Do your friends play it? Yes. It's usually like towards the ends of parties, but um, it never usually ends well. And it always becomes just really basic and boring truths or dares. And do people prefer getting people to do truths or dares? Uh, dares. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, this film comes from the Bloomhouse Productions team. They're the same production team that uh, brought us Get Out. This film follows a group of uh, freshers, freshmen at, at sort of high school, college, when they go on spring break. And on the spring break, the, the, the crew are uh, intercepted by a chap from another group, aren't they? Yeah. Who sort of uh, entices them into a game of truth or dare in this very deserted Mexican uh, chapel type place, yeah. deserted chapel. And then from there, how would you describe what then happens from there? He passes on this disease type thing mm. that lives in the game Truth or Dare. And by passing it on to that group, what they have to do, this new group of friends, they have to do all the truths and the dares, and if they don't, they'll die. And if they refuse to play the great game, they will also die. So they basically have to play the game yes. by the rules, That's otherwise right. they will all die. I guess it's kind of just them trying to figure out a way of getting rid of the game, Yeah. and also what happens along the way. So the boy that they meet is sort of the last surviving member of a previous group of friends. Well, he's not the only one, no, there's the another person. That's right. They're, two, they're only two surviving from the last group, yeah. but he's the one that passes it to these guys. That's right. And he thinks by passing it to them, it will he will no longer have to play the game, but he he still does. I mean, as an idea, that's quite a rich idea, isn't it? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it was really clever. It sort of reminded me a little bit of Stop. the concept behind films like It Follows, where you sort of have a sort of yeah, it was quite similar. The passing on. Or yeah. Something. And a sort of viral type thing. Yeah. I mean, I really liked, for example, the opening sequence where we got to know our characters yes. through all of their social media platforms. Yeah, I really liked And uh, you see, you saw clips of them filming them being silly and photos and posts. Yeah. Well, I made a few of my friends watch It Follows, and It Follows was all like, it was like sexually transmitted. Mm ghostly disease so yes. when when somebody has sex they pass it on to somebody else and they see things that everybody mm. else sees i remember it put off it put all of my friends off of it they were like oh, i never <laughs> want to have sex oh how funny um I, I don't know if this would stop kids from wanting to play truth or dare so it started with a good idea yeah and then you made a point which was they didn't have many they didn't have much fun with the truths or dares to begin with did they no i think it went when the game first starts and they realize that mm. this is, is everything the guy told them was true. And they it's have dangerous. actually got that it is actually dangerous yeah. and it's going to carry on. It went straight into being like kind of scary or dangerous stairs. Yes. Uh, there was one silly one with one of the characters and I thought they could have played with it a bit more and it could have been more silly. And, and I think, yeah, I agree. And I think that would have been one of my major criticisms of the whole film was I think they could have had more fun with the idea. Yeah. And there was one particular character who was in the front half of the film who was a proper frat boy, you know, a sort of annoying. But funnily enough, for me, was the, one of the most entertaining in it, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, he was. And I don't think it's a spoiler to say what happens to him because it's in the trailer. No, it's in the trailer. Actually, his, his dare was kind of, kind of silly, but he was told by this girl he kind of went up to in a bar to try and chat up. Yeah. And she said... I dare you to, her face went all funny like they do, yes. like, mm. uh, I dare you to go on top of the pool table and show everybody your business, do your, your yeah. doodle. And he was like, yeah, okay. And he goes up and then somebody shouts, so it's not that impressive. So he says, oh, screw this, I'm not going to play it. Yeah. And he like slipped on one of the uh, oh. balls and like, Oh. Like his head falls on the other pool table and snaps and it was like oh my god it was so painful to watch it really was wasn't it but he was the most fun character in it yeah, and so he once died. he went i sort of felt slightly crestfallen and then we so we proceeded to move through a whole series of events where various people would truth or dare i there were a, f a few rules with this game virus that i never got my head around where was it coming from so it would sometimes be situated within say the the 
the guy who looked like the homeless guy walking down the street, mm. or it would be situated in the, the guy's father who was a cop. And then other times they would hear it in their heads or they'd see it in the phone. So it would come from anywhere, wouldn't it? Yeah, there wasn't a certain place it came from. No, and then and then there would be and then there was another sub rule, which was you you couldn't do two day two dares two truths. Okay, you, yeah, you could only do two truths, and then it had to be a dare. Once they knew that, there was a lot of game playing as to who was going to do the truth and who was yeah. going to do the dare. You, but you made a really interesting observation. So as one by one they started to pop off, <laughs> yeah, they didn't seem particularly yeah, bothered. Yeah, they didn't. Well, at first I thought, okay, they're in shock. But then I kept, you know, it came towards the ending of the film and I said they haven't really reacted to anything. They hadn't, had all. they? No. It was almost like it hadn't happened to I mean, them. there was only one character that really was kind of, I'm not going to give it away, but no. she, she was really... <laughs> yes. Dwelling on it. Yeah. But it was just, I just, it was weird. I thought they ran out of juice early on. Yeah. I thought that, the, you know, they had a really compelling concept. So I thought it was a bit weak that they went for the sort of cross the Mexican border concept. A, because I felt a bit uneasy about it. Like, only if you go across the Mexican border will you get this really nasty, horrible devil like disease. Right. I thought yeah. that was a bit strange. Also, how they, how easily they got across the border of Mexico. Yeah, and also the film started, and I realised that this was a, a dare, which was incorrect, but it started with them, and it doesn't give anything away because you'll witness it in the first couple of minutes, but they set fire to someone. And this is the most, I mean, that was almost the most shocking moment in the film. So I don't you, know about that, there were a few very shocking things. Well, did it shock you? Were there shocking there moments? There were shocking parts of the film, but a lot of those parts were used at the beginning. Yeah, I true. felt as it carried on, and it became too, it, you know, it came up with the whole demonic thing, and there mm. has to be a spirit, and I just thought it was a bit mm. like all the others. Yes. As soon as it went all that way, it was a bit weak. It went a bit spells and a bit yeah, weird do things, it, do things, say and rituals. Say spells seven times and do a ritual, and I just thought it was a bit mainstream. Horror I was going to say because you're a massive horror fan, so how did how did this sit for you as a horror film? I am a horror fan, but you know a lot of horrors now are quite laughable because yeah. they're all really samey and a lot yeah. of them aren't scary. Like you said, I thought it was a really good concept, but you know as it a bit about I'd say about halfway through, yeah, you, I kind of lost it a bit. I was just yeah. like mm, not feeling it. So I think you're right. The frustration with this was it it promised to be something very different because if you think about it, a lot of the horror in this film happens in the daylight, which I quite like. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of everyday situations. I'm thinking of that scene with the young lad with his dad who was the cop. And, and there were some brilliant moments that I think in the hands of a better director, the drama and the stress could have really been rinsed a bit more. Yeah. I think they got through each of the moments of shock and horror a little bit too quickly. I mean, I felt like, you know, some of them would have to have been because there were quite a lot of shocking moments. Mm. But yeah, they moved too quickly with all of them. And then you had one moment in the middle where the key girl, the blonde girl, was di just disappeared from the story for ages. And I was thinking, well, hang on oh, a minute, yeah, you yeah. know, what's going she on? She really got my nerves. Yeah. And yeah. so I felt they also dropped the ball a bit where you could have had that moment where all of them were looking out for each other and a bit stressed about who the next one was. That seemed to pause for a moment. Yeah. They have this device, I mean, all the way through the film, which people have probably seen in the trailers and on the posters, but the, how do you, what does the face go? Which I thought oh at first was really effective, but, but then it became sort of, I thought a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, me too. I did think it was scary. It didn't really work. It was weird at first, and a few of them were weirder than the others. Yes. Oh, well, there was one particularly good one where there was the scene in the hospital. Oh, yeah. I yeah. thought that was the best scene for horror. I thought for building a, a sense of horror. Yeah, well, I mean, it was very good, yeah. Whereas the scene with the snooker ball, the snooker table guy, that, that, was, that was just, that was just gross. I thought they had the chance to play with another concept, which was, there was one point where one of the characters says, well, why don't we just keep telling the truth? And I really liked that as a thought, because you would think that there would be safety in always being truthful. Yeah, but there wasn't. There wasn't, was there? Because all of their, the truths they were given yeah. were tearing them apart. Yeah, which was kind of clever. Because they would need to stick together. Again, there was another really rich thought there, which was thrown under the under the under the wheels of a sort of quite yeah. They, they let go horror. of all of their really strong ideas. They did, didn't they? So that they could be more like everything else. Yeah, that's very true. Also, that awful green screen towards the end. Oh my god! Please explain to us what happens at the end. But there's a moment at the end where they where they show people watching a certain video, but all over the world, so you know, different cities, different yes. countries. And there's one of these two men in London, and the green screen was so 
awful. It was like shaking about and they had a black line around their, bo- their yeah, body. standing on Westminster Bridge. You said standing it was like... Standing on Westminster Bridge with the big bang. It was like they, they got an image from Google, <laughs> cut their bodies out and stuck it in the middle of it. I mean, and it looked like, you know when you go to Harry Potter World and you're on the broomstick? Yes. The, it looked like that. It was that bad. <laughs> it it was, was so bad. It was towards the end as well. You'd think they'd take it out to try and make the film look a little bit better. I know, it's true actually. They were literally dipping for the line of the end and, and then they, they chucked tr- in a shot that truly makes you go, did I just see that? It was that bad, like, I, I was going to laugh out loud. It felt like someone had literally edited it in today. Yeah, it was, it it's was really that bad. bad. It's really bad. So who were some of our favourite characters? Ooh, I, I really liked the funny jock. Which the was jock. Which was Sam Lerner. Oh, yeah, no, he was good. He played... Uh, Ronnie. And we saw him on one of the chat shows over here and he yes, looks like good did. fun. Yeah. I was saying to Maddie actually on the way back, it's quite good for an actor like him. I think he's the funniest in the film. Mm. Unfortunately, he's not in it for long enough. Yeah. But I think he'll be one of those actors that I can imagine us seeing other films and you saying, he's the one out of oh, yeah, Truth or Dare. Too. What did you the think of the two main one, girls? The blonde one really got on my nerves. Did you? I thought she was just, she was given that I don't know, I felt she was a bit too much of a bitch at times. Mm. And she was too weak. Like, she got she got really upset about pointless... I mean, some of the things she had to run to be upset about. But there were times where you were just like, okay, get over yourself. Like, stop running away. Just stick with them. And what about the love interest? Yeah, the guy played by Tyler Posey, which I know loads of people really like because he's from something, like, I think he's from um, Teen Wolf. That's oh. It. He's from Teen Wolf. Oh, okay, he looks a bit wolfy. Which is like... You know, a lot a lot of girls have a crush on him. Mm. So that's probably why he was in it. But I don't think he's a good actor. It very much follows in the tradition of all those horror films, like, you know, dating back to the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween, mm. Friday the 13th, where you always have a group of teens and you have those teens in the group that have misbehaved a bit more than others, usually become the first ones to die. Yeah, the stupid uh, ones. Yeah, exactly. But like you, by about an hour in, I was really fidgeting. Because mm, so. I thought... I'm just going to see another weird face and the same thing get much scarier. <laughs> yeah. So, on that note... Mm. Scores on the doors and why? I think I'm going to go with a four because mm. I think the idea was really good. Mm. Um, some of the actors, I thought, did really well and there were some really strong parts in there. The reason it's not a ten or a high number would be because it lost itself. It did. Yeah, an hour in. Mm. And I don't know, the ideas became a bit weaker. Mm. The characters got my nerves. It was a little bit too long. The ending was a bit predictable. I'm going to pinch it a little bit harder even. I'm going to go 3.5. But likewise, the reason I'm not giving it lower, actually, is because I do think they had a good idea. And I, I think they were unaware of how potentially clever the idea was. They could have just had more fun inventive yeah. fun and I think in the hands of a more creative director the director was responsible for Kick-Ass 2 which oh, oh. I, you know it was all, I, you would, I, would have expe- all right. I would have expected better from him but um, yeah. it was just what I would call a workman-like horror <laughs> <laughs>